This module will describe how to provision Ruckus indoor and outdoor access points for SmartZone. At the completion of this module, you'll be able to describe the provisioning process of Ruckus access points to a SmartZone controller, know how to set up Ruckus access points with an initial configuration that will allow the access point to communicate with a remote SmartZone controller, and verify that an access point joins the SmartZone controller. The following slides will give a short description on installation features of the R510 and R610 Ruckus indoor access points. The R510 and the R610 are very similar in look, but there are some differences. The R510 is a dual band 2x2x2 2 2 802.11ac Wave 2 access point. This means it has two transmit and two receive radio chains with two spatial streams while the R610 is a 3 times 3 by 3 access point, which means it has 3 transmit and 3 receive radio chains with 3 spatial data streams. This means that the R610 needs more power than the R510. The R510 access point can be powered by a DC input, which is 12 volts DC, or power over Ethernet 802.3 AF, while the R610 can be powered by a DC power supply, PoE or PoE+. They each have a compact form for installation with an easy snap-on mount for attaching to a 5 16th acoustical ceiling T-bar. The physical size of the R610 is slightly bigger. Both have two RJ45 Ethernet ports, which are auto MDX, auto sensing 10, 100, or 1000 megabits per second. One port is a PoE port. They also contain one USB 2.0 port that is ideal for BLE dongles and sensors. Lock options include a hidden latching mechanism, a Kensian lock hole, and T-bar torques. The Ruckus indoor access points can be mounted to a ceiling T-bar, attached to a secure mounting bracket, or mounted to a flat surface. An adjustable bracket for a recessed frame drop ceiling, either 9 16th or 15 16th frame, ships with the access point. Optional separate mounting accessories can be ordered from Ruckus by going to the Ruckus website. The following slides give a short description on the installation features of the T300 series outdoor access points. The Ruckus Outdoor T300 series access points are the T300 and the T301 series. They are 802.11ac 2 times 2 by 2 Wave 2 compatible outdoor APs. The T300 and T301 series comprise four different antenna flavors and include an internal Omni on the T300 and a 30-degree narrowed sector version for directed RF coverage on the T301N. The T301S, which is a 120-degree sector internal version, has Beamflex Plus with eight antenna patterns. The T301N has one antenna pattern per band. All the T300 series APs have dual polarization antennas, which is ideal for mobile connectivity, particularly necessary for performance and reliability in high-density environments. Both the T300 and the T301N APs have 802.11ac 5 GHz radios. The T300 APs are smaller than the T301 APs. The T300 and the T301 also have different mounting brackets, which are included with the unit. The T300 has a fixed snap-in bracket, while the T301 has a two-way adjustable bracket to allow for fine-tuning directed coverage. The T300 mounting options include an easy snap bracket for pole or wall mount support, a pole clamp or screw fasteners, fixed mounting options, and physical security features such as a security screw and access protection to mounting hardware. An optional any angle bracket can be used for mounting to pole or surface areas. Here we show a two-way adjustable bracket that provides flexible mounting options. It can be continuously adjustable with two degrees of freedom for an elevation tilt of plus or minus 90 degrees and an azimuth tilt of plus or minus 74 degrees. It can be pole and wall mounted with pole diameters from 1 inch to 2.5 inches or 25 millimeters to 65 millimeters. It has screw fasteners for 1 inch to 2.5 inches which are sturdy construction with an integrated hoist point. Now we'll describe how to manually configure ruckus access points to communicate with a remote smart zone controller. Before deploying Ruckus wireless products, please check for the latest software and release documentation. 
User guides and release notes are available at support.ruckuswireless.com forward slash documents. Software upgrades are available at support.ruckuswireless.com forward slash software. And open source information is available at opensource.ruckuswireless.com. If the access point does not automatically join the Smart Zone controller, then you would use the following steps to manually configure the access point. Step 1. Collect tools and set up requirements. Step 2. Connect the access point to your computer. Step 3. Pre prepare your computer for AP setup. Step 4. Log into the access point. Step 5. Customize the wireless settings for the Smart Zone settings. Step 6. Place the access point in your site. And Step 7. Verify the installation by making sure the access point communicates with the Smart Zone controller. We'll go over each of these steps in the following slides. Tools that are required to manually configure an access point are a computer running Windows 7 or greater, and procedures for other OSs are similar. Two CAT 5E Ethernet cables, a number 2 Phillips screwdriver and a T8 Torx driver for wall mounting anchor kit, an AC power adapter which is sold separately, or an 802.3AF or 802.3AT compliant power over Ethernet switch or PoE injector, and if you're mounting the access point to a truss or pole, two custom supplied cable ties. Step 2 is to connect the AP to your computer. Place your Ruckus access point next to your computer. Using an Ethernet cable, connect your computer's network port to one of the two Ethernet ports on the AP. Using an AC adapter which is sold separately, connect the AP 12 volt DC port to a protected power source. Alternatively, connect the PoE port to a PoE injector or switch for both power and network connections. Verify that the power LED on the access point enclosure is a steady green. On your Windows 7 computer, configure your network adapter from the local area connection setting as follows. Go to the Start menu, Control Panel, Network and Internet. Select the Network and Sharing Center, and then select Change Adapter Settings. Next, select the Local Area Connection. Under the Local Connection Properties, edit the TCP IP version 4 address settings as follows. Local Area Connection, and under Properties, the Internet Protocol version 4, which is TCP IP version 4, and then select Properties. The TCP IP version 4 Properties dialog box will appear. Enter in the following parameters. Pick an IP address within the same class of IP address. Since the default gateway is 192.168.0.1, which is on the sticker on the back of the access point, it is suggested to use an IP address of 192.168.0.22 or some other number other than 1 for the fourth octet. Enter a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and the default gateway of 192.168.0.1. As an important reminder, write down all of the current active settings your computer had before you change these settings so you can restore your computer to its current configuration after this process is completed. Now it's time to log into the AP. Connect the AP directly to your computer through one of the Ethernet ports and power it on. On your computer, open a web browser window and type in the following URL to connect to the AP https forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.1 Press enter to initiate the connection. When a security alert dialog box appears, click on the link to proceed. When the Ruckus Wireless Admin Login page appears, enter the following. The username is super and the password is sp-admin. This information is also on the sticker on the back of your access point. Then click login and you'll come to the CLI homepage. Step 5 is to customize the administration and management settings. After logging into the CLI, you'll get to the main menu. You go to the administration menu on the left and select management. Then scroll down and enable the checkbox next to set controller address reboot to take effect. Then you'll enter the control plane IP address of the company's smart zone controller. You'll need to know this in advance. In our example, it's HTTPS Brocade Lab Virtual Smart Zone .net. After completing this step, log out of the AP interface. If you have more access points to configure, repeat this process for all your access points. The next step is to move the access point to its permanent location. Use an Ethernet cable to connect the Ethernet or PoE port to the appropriate network PoE device and verify that the PoE port LED is lit. 
if using a DC power adapter, connect it to the AP. After the AP boots up, it will be discovered by the Smart Zone controller and placed in the staging zone on the Smart Zone controller, and the power LED should turn a solid green after a short while. This means that the AP has received the local IP address. Step 7 is to verify connection status. The Smart Zone Network Admin will then move the AP to a permanent zone on the Smart Zone controller where the customer configuration would be located. At that point, the AP will auto upgrade the firmware and get the configuration from that zone. While this is happening, the control or DIR LED will blink. As a note, the control LED was called the DIR LED on older APs and you may see this on some of your APs. When the CTL or DIR LED goes solid green, this means the access point has successfully completed its configuration. You should then see the configuration SSIDs appear on your local wireless LAN. If the AP has not been configured on the smart zone, it will stay in the staging zone on the smart zone controller and only the power LED will remain solid green. Next, we'll look at how the AP LEDs help to troubleshoot wireless LAN problems. If the access point has already been added and configured on the remote smart zone controller, the following actions should take place. Upon powering up, the access point performs a series of hardware tests. During this time, the power LED turns red for approximately 10 seconds. Once a local IP address is received, the power LED turns solid green. If the power LED keeps blinking green slowly, this indicates a local network switching issue, such as DHCP or VLAN configuration. If the power LED remains solid red, this indicates a hardware failure and the AP must be RMA'd for replacement. The control or DIR LED provides connection status information between the AP and the smart zone controller. Once the power LED turns solid green, the control or DIR LED will blink fast indicating the AP is getting updates from the cloud controller. Once the connection has been established, the control or DIR LED will turn solid green. In the event there is no connection to the internet, the LED will blink slowly. If this happens, check for firewall or DNS resolution or whether SSH or HTTPS protocols are blocked at your venue. Within five minutes, both the power and the control or DIR LED should be solid green. This means the AP is successfully communicating to the cloud server. At this point, all is good and the AP can be managed from the Ruckus Smart Zone dashboard. Once the power and control or DIR LEDs are solid green, the 2.4 and 5 GHz LEDs will illuminate in an amber color. This indicates that both bands are available and ready to serve clients. As soon as clients associate to the respective bands, these LEDs will change from amber to green. If the 2.4 and 5 GHz LEDs are off, it means the radio has not been configured on the Smart Zone controller. This will also be evident in the Smart Zone dashboard. Until the power and control or DIR LEDs are solid green, you will have to troubleshoot locally where the AP is residing, and if you can't get the AP to connect to the Smart Zone controller, you'll need to manually configure the AP as described earlier in this course. The next few slides describe what the network admin could see from the Smart Zone controller. A network admin will log into the Smart Zone controller using their username and password and arrive at the dashboard. From here, they would select the access point menu on the left side. Here we see an access point in the staging area. This will happen when the AP connects to the Smart Zone controller after it has been manually set up to enable it to automatically connect to an external controller. From here, the AP will be moved to an active zone where it will receive its configuration. Here, the AP has been moved by the network administrator to its final customer zone. Once placed in the zone, the Smart Zone controller will download the latest firmware upgrade and the SSIDs that have been configured for it. In this module, we have described the provisioning process of Ruckus access points to a Smart Zone controller, described how to set up Ruckus APs with an initial configuration that will allow the AP to communicate with a remote Smart Zone controller, and shown how to verify that an AP successfully joins a Smart Zone controller. This concludes the AP Smart Zone Provisioning Training Module.